today, my dear sewing friends, we're talking about gifts, but not just any gift, but those unique handmade items that are gonna make somebody smile extra wide. So we're talking about personalized gifts. Now in this video, I'll be sharing with you five categories, two or three gift examples in each, so you'll have plenty of gift ideas for the nearest future. And of course, I'll be sharing with you best tips and tricks and practices for personalizing. And I'm really happy to say that I've also partnered with Cricut to turn on our creativity a little bit more and to really dive in into that personalization and making it super unique. So without any further ado, let's jump right into it. The first category of gifts that we're gonna be talking about I call category kitchen. And I have a friend who just moved in into a new house, so I thought, let me create something that would be a beautiful hostess gift and something that would cheer her up. So that is coming up. But one of the reasons why I really love this category is because number one, during holiday times or any celebration really, I think we spend a lot of time in the kitchen, which is pretty great. You know, we cook, we gather, we have fun, we have family time in the kitchen. And of course, any item that you make for kitchen is really safe to say that it's probably gonna get quite a bit of use. And you know that creating useful items and gifting useful items is really important to me because if I spend all that time and all that energy into making something really beautiful, really useful from the heart, I truly want to make sure that it's getting used as well. Now here are three kitchen items that I've made as gifts in the past and they were all really well received. Number one is kind of like two in one. We're talking about tea towels and we're talking about special occasion napkins. Well, the reason why it's two in one is because the principle is the same. We're just altering the shape from a rectangle, which would be a tea towel. We're going to a square, which would be a napkin. Now, if you personalize napkins for special occasion for each family member with their name or maybe a fun little phrase, that could be a really big hit. And of course, tea towels are always used in the kitchen. Who doesn't love a beautiful tea towel that they can also use during holiday season or just all the time. We're gonna need some medium weight fabric that is very absorbent of natural fibers because you will be washing this quite a bit. So here I'm working with white linen which is medium weight and I've made tea towels or kitchen towels from it before so I can say it works great. Now I've cut mine 18 inches by 25 inches don't forget to add your hem allowance as well. And we're gonna be hemming the edges of it with a double fold hem, which is really simple, really straightforward. Fold it once, put a stitch, fold it one more time, put a stitch through it one more time if needed. I have a tutorial for it in the info box below. So now that we have hemmed all four sides, let's go ahead and give it a good press because linen, you see how wrinkly it is? It loves to do this. So let's go ahead and give it a really good press and let's have fun with it. My friend loves to bake, she loves to cook, and she loves tea. So I think this is going to be a winner. Now you can personalize these items with embroidery or a silk screen, and I've done both of these in the past, but today I would love to try to do it with Cricut. I'm gonna be using Smart Iron-On, which is going to have this really velvety, smooth finish, and I'm gonna go into Cricut Design Space, and I will see what kind of images they have. Now you can, of course, create your own image in your own design, but first I just wanna take a look, maybe something catches my eye. I mean, they have so many amazing images. Like, can you really blame me for looking for the easy way? <laughs> so I found this really cute saying that says, enjoy the little things. Now it does come on the pin holder, so it's an actual project. I don't want to make a pin holder. We're after tea towels. So I'm gonna delete the outline of the pin holder and then I'm going to resize it because I want the saying to be fit on one side of the tea towel when you fold it in half. And then you can put it over the handle over your stove or your dishwasher, whichever one you have. So that's what I'm after. I'm going to resize it and it's time to load up the Cricut machine. As I said, this is smart iron on, so we're going to be cutting it without mat, which makes it even easier. And then Cricut tells you everything you need to know. And the only thing that you got to remember is to click on mirror, especially if you're using words, you want to make sure that you click on that. So that way, when you go to iron it on, the saying actually says what you want to say and not the other way around, like you would be looking in the mirror. And it's easy as that. You load it in, 
Cricut cuts it, then you take it out, and then you weed it, meaning that you remove the unnecessary parts of the design so that all you have left is the actual saying or the actual image that you want. And then you just follow the instructions on how to press it, and that's it. You have these beautiful tea towels all ready to go. I absolutely love it. I, I love it so much, I almost want to keep it. But I made three, so I made two for my friend and one for myself. So what do you think? Did that make a beautiful gift? I truly think that it does. Now I'm gonna go ahead and arrange it in a basket and it's going to be ready to gift. Number two is an apron. Now apron might seem like such an everyday item, but people use it a lot. I know I use it a lot. Actually, my little one uses it quite a lot because she is a mess wherever she goes. So when we talk about apron, think about more than just kitchen. Think about art. Think about anything art related. Think about garden apron. So many, many possibilities. To personalize it, choose some really beautiful fabric that speaks to that person. Maybe they like certain color. Maybe they they like certain plant, maybe they like certain sports team. So there's definitely quite a lot of possibilities for it. I made one for my grandmother last year. I made one for my sister-in-law two years ago, and I've made quite a few over the course of my sewing to begin with. So you can also pair your apron with this next item, which is a pot holder. Pot holders are also a really nice, useful item for your kitchen, especially when they come in their regular sizes. When I say irregular size, like extra large, for example, for those big casseroles or things like that, because I'm sure you had that moment when you need to put something on your working surface in the kitchen, and your pot holders are just too small. So definitely think about useful items in the shapes or forms that maybe are not available to buy in the store. All right, this next category is a no-brainer, but I still want to point your attention to it. And we're talking about clothes. And you might say, well, Elisa, personalizing clothes, come on now, I can go to a shop and buy any t-shirt, whatever you want. And you might be right to some degree. And here's a good example. A couple years ago, we had this huge family gathering. And before that, I haven't seen my family for five years. So my mom, my dad, and my sister. And it was a really big event for me. And they're all into Harry Potter. I'm into Harry Potter, so we're all huge Harry Potter fans. So I decided to make these sweatshirts, raglan sleeve sweatshirts from Harry Potter fabric for the entire family. Even my little one, who was like nine months at the time, had a matching one. So it definitely makes it very special. You can buy stuff like that in the store, and I truly think that it's worth the time and effort for such a special occasion, at least for me. Now, here's another thing. My daughter's name is Artemis. You're not going to find a t-shirt with that name in a store. And my name is Elisa and I have never found even a keychain in a gift shop with my name spelled correctly. So if you want to personalize something and make it really unique for that person, this is perfect. Here's an extra tip. I think you see the reoccurring detail of raglan sleeve sweatshirts or t-shirts and that is no coincidence. When you're sewing a piece of clothing for somebody that is not immediately available for you to try it on. Raglan sleeves are easier to fit and easier to get them right in terms of the fit for that particular person. So if you're sewing for somebody who lives in another country or in another state or maybe somebody who is not right here in front of you, then raglan sleeves is something that I would go for. Another reason why raglan sleeves are really great for customized clothing or a gift like that is because it's really fun to color block or to combine two different fabrics, just like you saw me do with the Harry Potter sweatshirts. So I have a friend who absolutely loves to hike. She lives for hiking, and mountains is something that she absolutely loves. So I made this sweatshirt, and I love the two colors together. I think it's gonna be really great for Christmas time, but I don't want a Christmassy message on here. I actually want something with the mountains, something with traveling, maybe hiking. So let's go ahead and jazz it up. Now, although this is a completely different project, these steps are going to be exactly the same as for the first tea towel project because I'm using the same material and the same principle. And Cricut guides you through step by step on what to do and when to do it, so it's really easy to create something unique and something beautiful in no time. 
Now you might be asking, Elisa, you're using black again? I promise I use other colors as well. I've made t-shirts for my little one with this beautiful holographic iron on. I've made t-shirts with this sparkly green. I have some glitter iron on. So plenty of possibilities is just for these particular colors. I really love how that matte black looks on them. Now, since I'm not guiding you through step-by-step -step how to sew and draft a raglan sweatshirt like this, otherwise this video would be three hours long, all of the necessary tutorials that I've mentioned in this video are going to be linked in the info box below. So you can find all information that you will need in the info box underneath. And that's it, a beautiful gift for a beautiful friend is ready to be gifted. Now I also made this card to go specifically with this gift. Now usually I paint my cards by hand because I do paint with watercolors quite often, but this time I wanted to make one with Cricut so that way you can see that you can cut a ton of other material, not just iron-on, but also cardstock and other things as well. So something to keep in mind. For this next idea, people go absolutely gaga. I can't really say that I'm really into it, but when we're making gifts or items for sale, it's really important to remember it's not about us, it's about them. So if somebody you love or your friend or family really loves decorative throw pillows or maybe blankets or anything that is super personalized on the display in the living room or in the bedroom, this is going to be right up their alley. So we're talking about personalized pillows and throw blankets and when we talk about pillows a lot of times you think well just pillows the ones that sit on the sofa in the living room but I urge you to think a step further think tooth fairy pillows for your little ones think memory pillows much like memory bears think about anything else personalized that is very particular for this or that family and you can make some beautiful customized gifts now there are a couple of ways how you can do it and here's a quick little tip if you're somebody who really loves a variety of pillows throughout the years like for example me mm, I just have one for winter one for summer that's about it and mine are pretty pretty plain but if you're somebody who loves to change out pillows as a decor in your living room think about investing into pillowcases instead of buying new pillows time and time again that will save you space so much space and a lot of money as well because pillows can be a little bit pricey so pillowcases definitely save the day now if you want to make a personalized pillow for somebody that you love there are a couple ways how you can go about it number one which is really impressive is a quilted pillow and you can go for really simple shapes like squares or triangles and that should be no problem even for those who have never quilted before now of course embroidery either machine embroidery or by hand I used to do cross stitching many years ago and that could make such a beautiful middle of the pillow or maybe the whole pillow if you have the time and your creativity takes there now another interesting idea that I want to show you is something although this is not a pillow is something that I did a couple of years ago on this little gift tote so this this gift tote is just to put a little gift for Christmas time and we reuse it year after year. And um, while it's not in use, I just threw some Christmas decorations in it. So this fabric was actually plain like this, just black and white. And I did add those red lines. Those are just red stitches on the sewing machine, just a straight stitch, nothing more complicated than that. And then there's this cutout of a deer. This deer has been cut out out of felt, so it's a really easy. And then I actually used fabric glue Mm, this is an interesting story. So I've used fabric glue to attach this deer to this tote. Now this tote, we don't use much, right? It's only out there for holiday season, a couple weeks, and then it's in a storage. And even though we don't use it much, the glue started to come apart and the deer kind of started pulling up. So if you're using fabric glue, I would suggest for you to do that and then do a beautiful blanket stitch around your felt applique. And that could make a beautiful, beautiful pillow. So imagine this red deer on this pillow. That could be so cute and you don't have to do a deer you can do plenty of other different interesting shapes that are simple enough but very impressive once you put it on a pillow now with this next category it might seem like I'm contradicting myself because these items are not necessarily used on a daily basis but I truly think that they're very important something that makes us and makes our history I'm about to show you something very special something that is over 30 years old 
and you will understand why I do think that this category definitely matters and it's worth for us to invest our time and effort into it. And that is decor and things that you can pass along to your children or your grandchildren. This piece of art is over 30 years old. My mom did this when she was pregnant with me, so I wasn't even born yet. And my mom did this little patchwork all by hand. Can you imagine this is over 30 years old? Now I do want to frame it and I do want to put it on the wall. I just have to figure out where I want to do it because this is very special. Not only she did it and she passed it on to me, not only her handwork is in this piece, but this piece also shows a very important part of my culture. I am Russian, originally born and raised in Europe and my first language is Russian. And you see here a very traditional scene of two babushkas drinking tea. And in the middle, you see samavar, which is a kind of like a Russian tea kettle that would heat up the uh, water and would heat up the teapot right over here as well. So this is very important, something that is very special, something that I want to pass on to my children. So the category of the items that we're talking about next are either Either decor items or items of a very high significance that could be passed down years and years after. So one of those are Christmas ornaments. Now I've been making Christmas ornaments by hand for many many years and every year without a doubt I send one or more handmade Christmas ornaments to my mom. I make them out of clay, I make them out of mixed media, I also sew them. So this is made out of felt, beautiful little ginger house. Another highly personalized item that could also make the history of your family are Christmas stockings. You can jazz them up with names, you can jazz them up with special items, so definitely think about that. Of course, fall season is right over here, and last year I made these cute little pumpkins. Now usually you will see these pumpkins around the internet made out of sweaters, but this is a really great scrap busting project that you can do by yourself or maybe with your kids or grandkids. Also makes beautiful memories. Now these can be personalized on the bottom with the names if you want to. You can leave them as is. I added a little glitter because I think glitter makes everything a little bit better. So something like this could also be a really nice piece of decor and if you personalize it a little bit further this could also be something that lives in that house year after year. If we continue talking about decor for Christmas time you will see a lot of these gnomes. They are very popular right now. Now I've painted mine out of clay and this has been fired but you can also sew one as well. So definitely think about that. Stuffed animals could be a really great gift as well. Something that could possibly be passed down for years and years because I made, I actually made stuffed animals since I was about 10, 9, 10 years old. And I remember in one of the videos I did mention that I made and sewed my own stuffed animals. Somebody said that, nah, I don't believe that you did that this young. So to this I'll say don't ever underestimate your abilities and don't ever underestimate the abilities of the kids. Kids are much smarter than we think that they are and they're capable of many things. You just have to give them the liberty and the opportunity to try and to do it. I can definitely see that in my toddler. So I definitely want to encourage you to not to be shy, to experiment, to do beautiful things like that, to personalize your sewing and to take it a step further because you can totally do it. Now this next category of items definitely has been around and in our lives for a while now. And although this is an item that a lot of us probably have, it still is a great thing to personalize because it really provides you a blank canvas for a variety of different techniques. You know, tie dyeing, you can do mixed media. We're gonna do another Cricut project here in a second. But before we do, I think a lot of you might be asking what actually is Cricut? And it's a fair question because if you're not familiar with it, you're like, what in the world? So the easiest way to go about it, it's a smart cutting machine. So it can cut a lot of different things in a lot of different shapes and a lot of different designs. And it can cut cardstock, uh, fabric, it can cut vinyl, and like 300 plus other materials. So for me, since I work with sewing and that's my favorite hobby, that's my passion for life, of course I'm more excited about iron-on and that's what Cricut, who is the sponsor of this video, did send me to try it on. But I, 
I was really excited and I was really impressed. So I actually went out and I bought cardstock and I bought a scoring wheel and I bought mats for the cardstock. So there's a lot of possibilities, a lot of different tools to play around with your Cricut and a lot of creative things that you can make with it. It plugs into your computer so you can do all of the cool things in the design space like I showed you at the beginning of this video. If you're concerned about how much time and learning curve it has, of course everything has a learning curve, but it's actually really easy to use one. Take it from somebody who doesn't have much time at all. So without any further ado, let's jump into another Cricut project and I'm gonna be making this for my artistic friend. This category is all about totes and bags and scarves. And as I mentioned, these provide a really nice blank canvas for a lot of personalization. I'm making this for a friend with whom I did farmer's market this summer and she has an Etsy shop and this is actually her name, her Etsy shop name, her creative alter ego if you want to say so. And I think there's something very powerful about seeing the name of your business, especially small business, on some items that you're going to be using day to day. So I'm making this for her brushes or her tin of watercolors or things like that that she can put inside and keep them organized so I think that she will absolutely love it. And then of course, let's talk about some scarves. You can purchase silk and you can tie dye them. You can also do eyes dye. There are so many different things and you can do fabric marbling as well. I've done that in the past. It is so gorgeous, wow. That has a little bit of a learning curve to it, but the result is totally worth it. When we talk about totes, I also made this for my friend. She absolutely loves to go to the library with kiddos. So it says books and stuff on one side, and it has mushrooms for her to color with fabric markers on the other side. So I think this could be also such a fun and useful and thoughtful gift. Well, my dear sewing friends, thank you so much for watching. I truly hope that you enjoyed this video about personalized gifts, about gifts that have a little bit deeper meaning, and I truly hope that it gave you plenty of ideas. If you want more ideas about Christmas gifts or gifts that you can sew and sell, click right over here. It will take you to the playlist of those videos. And until next time, happy sewing. Create something beautiful. You can do it. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.